consider y is equal to f of x the meaning of this is y varies with respect to x y is expressed in terms of x y is a function of x example y is equal to x square plus 1 and when x is equal to 1 y is equal to 1 square plus 1 that is equal to 2 when x is equal to say for example 1.1 y is equal to 1.1 square plus 1 that is equal to 2.21 you can go on substituting the values of x y depends upon x so in other words you can say this is an example of y varies with respect to x it need not be y is equal to f of x it can be say for example s is equal to g of t displacement is a function of time displacement varies with respect to time example of that is s is equal to ut plus half a t square u and a are constants displacement varies with respect to time you can take another example v is equal to h of t velocity varies with respect to time so v is equal to say for example u plus a t where u and a are constants this is the example for this velocity varies with respect to time like that you come across plenty of examples if you take examples still more examples from physics say resistance of a conductor varies with respect to temperature in degree centigrade r naught into 1 plus alpha into t where r naught and alpha are constants for a given conductor say for example aluminium r naught and alpha are constants but if you consider copper the values of r naught and alpha are different for copper than aluminium here this is the example for r is equal to say f of t here t is not time t is temperature in degree centigrade resistance of a conductor varies with respect to temperature in degree centigrade according to this equation and if you draw the graph say this is y axis this is r and this is temperature in degree centigrade the graph goes like this it's a straight line r is equal to r naught into 1 plus alpha into t once again why i have given this example is you can observe here resistance varies with respect to temperature in degree centigrade at low temperature the resistance is low as the temperature increases resistance also increases you can see this rising uh, not curve straight line the graph of resistance versus temperature uh, in degree centigrade for a conductor is a straight line if you consider resistance of a semiconductor with respect to temperature r is equal to say a into e to the power of b by t this is a equation which governs the variation of resistance of a semiconductor with respect to temperature in kelvin r is equal to a into e to the power of b by t where a and b are constants for a given semiconductor you can have different types of semiconductors if you select one semiconductor a and b are constants whatever may be the temperature but a and b are constants if we consider another semiconductor a and b are different so e is such but exponential constant you know it's a constant between three uh, two and three two point seven one eight three exponential constant here uh, why i have given this example is this is an example for resistance of a semiconductor varying with respect to temperature in kelvin you come across other example you take daily life example if you throw a stone on the surface of a pond containing water then once you throw the stone on the surface of water it's a source of disturbance on the surface of water and the disturbance propagates in the form of concentric circles and if you throw a stone with more force then it's a larger disturbance and the disturbance propagates at a still faster rate and you can see the area of the circle growing with respect to time radius of the circle will also grow with respect to time if you take a take example from uh, physics once again say for example this is a charged particle having a charge q surrounding to this charged particle 
there will be an electric field region surrounding an electric charge in which another electric charge will experience a force is called as electric field here there is an electric charge the region surrounding to that is called as electric field obviously common sense says that at a point nearer to the charge the strength of electric field is more here the electric field is less here it is still less here it is still less as you go away from the given point charge then the strength of electric field decreases here once again what i mean to say is the strength of electric field is a quantity it's a physical quantity that varies with respect to distance not with respect to time earlier whatever i have taken the examples the independent variable was time here is the example where the strength of electric field varies with respect to distance you can take example from chemistry you know rate of a chemical reaction what do you mean by rate of a chemical reaction how fast the concentration of reactant molecules decreases or how fast the concentration of product molecules increases that will decide the rate of a chemical reaction here what you need to know is you take uh, from concentration of reactant molecules point of view at the beginning when the reaction just begins concentration of reactant molecules is very high with respect to time as the reaction progresses the concentration of reactant molecules decreases see here decreases concentration of reactant molecules is one quantity and it varies with respect to time here variation is a decrease if you think from product molecules point of view concentration of product molecules increases so here increase is a variation concentration of product molecules increases with respect to time is the variation is in the positive side you take example from economics population varies with respect to time you know the population growth rate in india and china it is much more than population growth rate in developed countries in the economic crisis when developed countries they could not sustain that economic crisis most of the banks in developed countries became bankrupt whereas the countries like india and china could sustain the economic crisis because we have a huge human resource so population is our strength that's what said by developed countries we were not knowing they said look india your strength is population and there onwards we started analyzing what's the population growth rate in india and what's the population growth rate in some other countries not only we developed countries also started analyzing what's the population growth rate in india and china from 2000 to 2001 2001 to 2002 2002 to 2003 then they started comparing with their country now this is very much needed in order to have economical analysis now here my example says that population growing with respect to time population varying with respect to time i have given plenty of examples where one quantity is varying with respect to other now if you say that one quantity is varying with respect to the other naturally there will be a uh, tendency say for example if there are different students student a student b student c student d imagine four students student a scoring marks in different exams the exams in the month of july august september like that student a scores marks out of 100 imagine say 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 like that student b the marks scored in different different exams starting from july 100 90 80 70 60 50 and so on and student c imagine the marks scored in different different exams say 90 92 88 91 
93, you can make out a small variation around 90. And student D, the marks scored by student D in different exams, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, you find that it is a constant. Well, you come back to the examples, example 1, student A, marks scored by student A in different exams, what did I say? It was 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. And it is a variation of marks. When the parent of that student comes and asks the principal, Sir, how is my son doing, son or daughter? Then the principal says, Well, the student is improving a lot. There is a remarkable improvement. The rate of improvement is quite high. 30, 40, 50, it is a mere common sense. See, there is a remarkable improvement from time to time, time to time. The measure of variation is quite huge. Measure of variation is large in, in case of student A. In case of student B, the mark scored by student B, what did I say? It is decreasing 100, 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, like that. When the parent of that student comes and asks the principal, principal says, no, something is wrong. The marks are deteriorating day by day. That the marks are falling down continuously. There is a drastic fall. It is not improvement, it is a drastic fall. Something is serious. We have got to really take care. The measure of variation is, you can say, it is on the negative side because it is decreasing. In student A, measure of variation is positive. In student B, measure of variation is negative. If you look at student C, marks scored by student C, the marks are varying like 90, 92, 88, 91, 89, 93, 87. See the variation is very small around 90. When the parent of that student comes and asks the principal, the principal says, nothing to worry, the marks are almost stable. Only thing is instead of having the oscillation around 90, it is better if the student oscillates around 98. But nothing to worry, the student is quite stable in performance. The measure of variation is maybe large, it is not large, it is small uh, positive or small negative. It is almost negligible, but there is some variation. It can be sometimes positive, sometimes negative. On an average, the variation is very, very small. The measure of variation is very small. In case of student D, the marks scored by student D in different exams, 90, 90, 90, 90, it is constant. When the parent of that student comes and asks the principal, the principal says, the student is always constant. The mark scored by student is always constant. No variation at all. The measure of variation is zero. If there is no variation, the measure of variation is zero. The, there is no variation at all with respect to time. In other words, we can say, in case of student A, since there is a remarkable improvement with respect to time, the measure of variation is large positive, student B, measure of variation is large negative, student C, measure of variation is low positive or low negative, in student D, measure of variation is zero. Why I am telling all these examples is, in these examples you find that one quantity varying with respect to other. Whenever one quantity is varying with respect to other, then we are very keen to know what is the measure of variation involved in that. Now, if you take example, say for example, if you take two conductors, conductor, conductor A, conductor A and conductor B. Now, conductor A, the measure of variation of resistance with respect to temperature in degree centigrade, it is something, say 0 0.01, example. And measure of variation, in case of uh, conductor B, measure of variation of resistance of a conductor with respect to temperature in degree centigrade, 0 0.015, which clearly says that conductor B is more sensitive for temperature changes. If the temperature increases here, the resistance changes by a smaller amount when compared to this. This is more sensitive. Say for example, if the in case of conductor A, temperature changes from 50 degree centigrade to 60 degree centigrade, the resistance varies from 5 to 6 ohm. Whereas here, 
it varies from 5 to 6.5 ohm. It is more sensitive for temperature changes. This is very important especially when you select the conductors uh, for making resistance boxes in the laboratory. The material selected for uh, making resistance boxes in that resistance boxes resistance wire will wires will be there and which material has to be selected for making those resistance wires contained in the resistance box. It must be that material which is least sensitive for temperature changes because when you conduct the experiment in the lab you conduct the experiment for say half an hour or 45 minutes or for one hour when the current flows in that there will be heat dissipated heat dissipation leads to increase of temperature increase of temperature may lead to increase of resistance if the resistance which you calculate it as 6 ohm which you take it as 6 ohm because of heat dissipation it may become 7 ohm but you have calculated it as 6 ohm that's why you have to select that material which is least sensitive for temperature changes. So, that is why this type of uh, comparison is very important. That is why I am telling the measure of variation of any quantity with respect to another to express in terms of numerical value is very very important. Let me come back. I was quoting about the examples of Mars code by different different students. Student A measure of variation is large positive student B measure of variation is large negative, student C measure of variation is low positive or low negative, student D measure of variation is 0. The measure of variation involved in a function, involved in a quantity which varies with respect to another that is called as derivative or differentiation or differential coefficient. What is that? Derivative, derivative or differentiation differentiation or differential coefficient differential coefficient coefficient say I can roughly say in case of student A the mass code by student A varies 30, 40, 50, 60 measure of variation is large positive in other words, differential coefficient of mass code by that student with respect to time is large positive. Student B, differential coefficient of mass code by that student with respect to time is large negative. Student C, derivative of mass code by that student with respect to time is low positive or low negative. And student D, where the mass code is constant, the derivative or differential coefficient of mass code by student D with respect to time is 0. So, derivative or Differential coefficient or differentiation means the measure of variation involved in a function. If you consider once again y is equal to f of x, say for example y is equal to f of x, I said y varies with respect to x. The measure of variation involved in that particular function is to be expressed in terms of a numerical value or in terms of an expression. And such an expression or such a numerical value is called as derivative or differential coefficient. Say and that is denoted by for the function y is equal to f of x measure of variation is nothing but or derivative of y with respect to x or differential coefficient of y with respect to x is written like this dy by dx. dy by dx is derivative of y with respect to x or differential coefficient of y with respect to x. If you consider another example, y is equal to say for example not y, say r is equal to uh, function of uh, temperature in case of semiconductor what I said, r is a function of uh, temperature, temperature in Kelvin. Then the measure of variation, you know resistance of a semiconductor decreases with respect to temperature in Kelvin. The graphical variation is like this. I had given the example R is equal to A into E to the power of B by T, where A and B are constants for a given semiconductor. E is a fixed constant called exponential constant, whose value is 2.7183. And this is R and this is nothing but T, capital T. And if you draw the graph of resistance of a semiconductor with respect to temperature in Kelvin, the graph will be like this, see like this, like this. This a graph 
which shows the variation of resistance of a semiconductor with respect to temperature in Kelvin. At low temperature, resistance is very high. As the temperature increases, resistance decreases appreciably. It decreases exponentially, you can say. See the exponential term is here. It decreases exponentially. As the temperature increases, resistance decreases. Uh, at low temperature, resistance is very high. You can also say at absolute zero temperature, the resistance is infinite. That's why we say a semiconductor behaves like a perfect insulator at absolute zero temperature. I repeat, a semiconductor behaves like a perfect insulator at absolute zero temperature. What do you mean by perfect insulator? Resistance is infinite. You can see with the help of this graph, at zero Kelvin, the resistance is infinite. This curve will never cut the y-axis or it will cut the y-axis at infinity. Then, resistance of a semiconductor will never become zero. In other words, a semiconductor will not become a superconductor. A resistance will become a superconductor only at infinite temperature. That's the meaning of this particular graph. Let me come back. Resistance varies with respect to temperature in Kelvin. The measure of variation, how it varies with respect to temperature in Kelvin? You have to express in terms of a numerical value or expression called derivative or differential coefficient. That is denoted by dr by dt. It gives idea that derivative of resistance with respect to temperature in Kelvin. Derivative of resistance, derivative of resistance with respect to temperature in Kelvin. You take, you can take plenty of example. Say for example, concentration of reactant molecules, say C. Concentration of reactant molecules, if you take it as C. Then, rate of a chemical reaction gives the idea how fast the concentration of reactant molecules decreases. So, that is given by dc by dt. C is equal to, say, concentration of reactant molecules. dc by dt gives the idea how fast the uh, reactant molecules, concentration of reactant molecules decreases with respect to time. Or this is also giving the idea of rate of a chemical reaction, dc by dt. This is giving the idea that the derivative of concentration of reactant molecules with respect to time. If you uh, take y is equal to x square plus 1, say for example, one example of y is equal to f of x, if you take when x is equal to 1, y is equal to 1 square plus 1, that is equal to 2. When x is equal to 1.1, y is equal to 1.1 square plus 1, that is equal to 2.21. See, y is dependent variable, x is independent variable. You find that the value of x varies by small amount, delta x is equal to 0.1, you can make out here. Small change in, small change is always denoted by lowercase Greek alphabet, delta. Say small change in x is delta x, small change in y is delta y, small change in s is delta s, small change in uh, t is delta t. Say small change in x, x varies from 1 to 1.1. So, there is a small change in x, so delta x is equal to 0.1. You find that there will be a small change in corresponding small change in y also. So, delta y is equal to, you find that it is 0.21. Definitely y changes because of change in x. y varies, the change in y is also very small because change in x is also very small. y depends upon x. If there is a small change in x, then there will be corresponding small change in y. Having understood this, we will analyze in general. What is that? Say for example, you consider y is equal to f of x. Just now I have taken the example. If there is a small change in x, if delta x is a small change in x, small change in x, change in x, then delta y will be the will be the corresponding small change in y. Corresponding small change in y. Corresponding small change in y. Okay. So, when you substitute the new value of x, you will get the new value of y. 
original value of y is y, new value of y is y plus delta y. How do you obtain that uh, new value of y? By substituting new value of x in the given expression. Say for example, let me take the example y is equal to x square plus 1. I said when x is equal to 1, 1, y is equal to 1 square plus 1, that is equal to 2. When x is equal to, when x is equal to say 1.1, y is equal to 1.1 square plus 1, that is equal to 2.21. See, this is the new value of y. How did you obtain new value of y? By substituting new value of x. Same thing, in the given function, if you want to obtain new value of y, then you have to substitute not x, you have to substitute x plus delta x. Say in the given expression, you have substituted 1.1 to get new value of y. You got the new value of y. Okay. Now, you find that there is a small change in x that is delta x and there will be corresponding small change in y that is called as delta y. And this delta x and delta y are called incremental quantities in x and y. Incremental quantities incremental quantities in x and y, x and y. <coughs> delta y by delta x is called as incremental ratio, incremental ratio, incremental ratio. Say you must get the fair idea now, why we are analyzing like this? We wanted to extract what is the measure of variation involved in the function y is equal to f of x. What exactly is the measure of variation involved in y is equal to f of x? What exactly is derivative of y with respect to x? What exactly is differential coefficient of y with respect to x? You know the meaning, but mathematical version you must know. The meaning of derivative of y with respect to x is nothing but it is a measure of variation involved in the function y is equal to f of x. Now delta y by delta x, see change in y cannot be the measure of variation in y. Change in y for how much change in x? Say for example, there are two businessmen, x and y. And investment of these businessmen, x invests 10 lakhs, two different business and y invest 20 lakhs. The returns or the profit at the end of first year, imagine this is 2 lakhs here, this is 3 lakhs. Now the question is, who is a better businessman? Businessman X or businessman Y? It is not uh, businessman Y because Businessman Y, even the businessman Y, even though he has the profit of 3 lakhs, which is more than that of X. But you see here, the profit 3 lakhs is for 20 lakhs investment. Here profit is 2 lakhs for 10 lakhs investment. If you calculate the ratio 3 by 20, here the ratio is 2 by 10, 2 by 10 and this is 3 by 20. Definitely 2 by 10 is more than 3 by 20 and I will tell you this is 3 by 2 is almost equal to 15 percent and here the uh, return is almost uh, uh, this is uh, 20 percent, yes 20 percent returns. Definitely businessman X is a better businessman. Similarly, we calculate on the base of ratio, similarly in case of Y is equal to F of X. In case of y is equal to f of x, whether uh, which is the measure of variation, which is the derivative, it cannot be just change in y. It must be change in y for how much change in x. Delta y by delta x is the measure of variation, that incremental ratio is the measure of variation. Delta y by delta x. But for all application purposes, this incremental ratio delta y by delta x. If you consider for infinitesimally small changes in x, in other words, the limit of delta y by delta x when delta x tends to 0, 
E is called derivative of y, derivative of y with respect to x or differential coefficient of y, differential coefficient of y, coefficient of y with respect to x and this is nothing but dy by dx or y dash or y1 these are the different notations used for measure of variation or derivative or differential coefficient once again for the function y is equal to f of x delta y by delta x is not derivative delta y by delta x is an indication of measure of variation but exact measure of variation for the function y is equal to f of x is delta y by delta x when the delta y by delta x is considered for infinitesimally small change in x or change in x is as small as possible. In other words, delta y by delta x, limiting case of delta y by delta x when delta x tends to 0, whatever answer you are getting that is called as derivative of y with respect to x or differential coefficient of y with respect to x. See, by looking at this, what idea you must get is delta y by delta x is an expression and for that expression you are taking limit as delta x tends to 0. You have worked out plenty of problems in limits and at the end you will get some answer. That answer is derivative of y with respect to x or differential coefficient of y with respect to x. Out of this discussion what you need to remember is dy by for the function f of x y is equal to f of x dy by dx is equal to limit of delta y by delta x when delta x tends to 0 this is what you need to remember dy by dx is equal to limit of delta y by delta x when delta x tends to 0. If you consider another example like say r is equal to a into e to the power of b by t variation of resistance of a semiconductor with respect to temperature in Kelvin. Then measure of variation is nothing but dr by dt is equal to limit of delta r by delta t when delta t tends to 0. If you consider velocity as a function of time, then dv by dt is equal to, you know dv by dt is representing the measure of variation rate of change of velocity in other words because that variation is with respect to time is equal to dv by dt is equal to limit of delta v by delta t when delta t tends to 0 and you know this is nothing but rate of change of velocity that is nothing but acceleration. Next if you consider the example of s is equal to f of t displacement as a function of time ds by dt if the displacement varies with respect to time what is the measure of variation? How fast displacement varies with respect to time? ds by dt, rate of change of displacement, you know this is nothing but velocity, rate of change of displacement. That is equal to limit of delta s by delta t when delta t tends to 0. It is exactly similar to this. You can take plenty of examples if you take example from radioactivity. Radioactivity is nothing but it is a natural phenomenon where the spontaneous disintegration of heavy nuclei with the emission of certain radiations is called as natural radioactivity. Say if you take 1 gram of radium with respect to time, whatever mass you have taken it decreases with respect to time. 1 gram will become half gram. Maybe the time taken is too high, means too much, maybe 1 year or 2 years or so many years. But with respect to time it decreases. Of course, because radium, the radioactivity, the decay is very, very slow. But if you take artificial radioactivity like radio sodium, 1 kg of radio sodium if you take, within 1 hour it will become half kg. Within another half an hour, uh, another 1 hour it will become 1 fourth of a kg. There is a spontaneous decrease of uh, disintegration of heavy nuclei with the emission of certain radiations that is called as radioactivity. And radioactivity is governed by this particular equation n0 into e to the power of minus lambda t. n is equal to n0 into e to the power of minus lambda into t. Whenever you come across any equation, do not be afraid. 
try to analyze what are the constants in that equation. Then we will get a hold in that particular equation. Say for example, n is equal to n 0 into e to the power of minus lambda t. What is n? What is n 0? What is e? e anyways you know, it is a constant. Just like pi, what is pi? It is a constant 3.1416. What is e? It is another constant between 2 and 3. 2.7183 ok it is universally accepted anywhere. Now what is lambda what is t? t you know it is nothing but time because number of atoms decreases with respect to time. n for number of atoms at any time t it is a variable n 0 is initial number of atoms what do you mean initial number of atoms say 1 gram of radium is given to you you must know how many atoms are contained in that. If you do not know, ask Avogadro, he will tell. N0 means initial number of atoms, which is a constant. 1 gram of radium, if it is given, the number of atoms in that is constant, may be very high, but it is constant. At the beginning, how much is it? It is a fixed value. N0 is initial number of atoms. This is not a variable. This is anyway fixed to constant. And lambda is a constant for a given radioactive element. For radium lambda is something, you take 1 kg, half kg, 1 fourth of a kg, 10 kg, lambda is fixed for radium. But if you take uranium, lambda is different. Radio sodium, if you take lambda is something else. Okay. N0 is constant, lambda is constant, E is constant. Then what are the things left out there? N and T. So, this is the best example for N is a function of time. N varies with respect to time, number of atoms remaining in the sample varying with respect to time. Here variation is a decrease because with respect to time the mass decreases. Now the question is if the mass decreases where it will go? It will go, it will disintegrate in the form of energy, there will be an energy radiation. It can be alpha radiation, beta radiation, gamma radiation, it will be in the form of energy radiation. Obviously if there is energy radiation it must be at the cost of mass. So, n is equal to n 0 into e to the power of minus lambda t. Now, you take one, 1 gram of uranium, 1 gram of radium. In case of uranium, the disintegration may be slower. In case of radium, disintegration may be faster. You need to compare what is the rate of radioactive disintegration in case of uranium and then in case of radium. How do you compare? To compare, you require an expression or you require a quantity you require a numerical value that is nothing but differentiation derivative differential coefficient. So, this is nothing but dn by dt represents this gives the idea rate of radioactive disintegration number of this gives the idea how fast the atoms disintegrate with respect to time how fast the atoms decay with respect to time dn by dt is equal to limit of delta n by delta t when delta t tends to 0. Okay. <clears throat> Say if you consider y is equal to f of x, you take it as equation 1. If delta x is a small change in x, small change in x then delta y will then delta y will be the corresponding small change in y will be the will be the corresponding small change in y corresponding small change in y small change in y ok therefore y plus delta y is equal to f of x plus delta x. You put it as equation 2. Now, equation 2 minus equation 1 if you do y plus delta y minus y is equal to f of x plus delta x minus f of x. y y cancels. So, you divide by delta x. Now, you need to remember one expression very important dy by dx means what? dy by dx the definition says that limit of delta y by delta x when delta x tends to 0. This is nothing but dy by dx you must know. This we already discussed. What is differential coefficient of y with respect to x? 
or differentiation of y with respect to x or derivative of y with respect to x. Derivative of y with respect to x is the limit of delta y by delta x when delta x tends to 0. Now, I must get an expression for dy by dx in general. For that what I have to do is I have to create delta y, delta x, I have to create delta x, then delta y, then I have to take limit, then you have to get an expression for dy by dx. Look at this, what you will get? Divide by delta x, <coughs> delta y by delta x is equal to f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x. Now, I can, I have to take limit on both sides. Taking limit on both sides, taking limit as delta x tends to 0 on both sides. Taking limit is, it is an operation just like squaring on both sides, taking square root on both sides, taking log on both sides, taking tan function on both sides, taking limit on both sides. So, what happens here? Limit of delta y by delta x when delta x tends to 0 is equal to limit of f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x when delta x tends to 0. Same expression I have rewritten, only thing is I have taken limit on both the sides. By definition, this part is dy by dx, you know. Definition says that limit of delta y by delta when delta x tends to 0 is dy by dx is equal to limit of f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x when delta x tends to 0. This also you need to remember. Apart from this, dy by dx is limit of delta y by delta x when delta x tends to 0. This is just to know what do you mean by dy by dx. Whereas, this expression, this expression is to know how to get dy by dx. This is to know what is dy by dx and this is to find out what is means how to find out dy by dx. dy by dx is equal to what? Limit of f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x when delta x tends to 0. Actually, this and this dy by dx is equal to limit of delta y by delta x are same when delta x tends to 0. These two things are same. See, left hand side is same, equality, right hand side this limit part is same and dividing term is same. Delta y is what? Change in y. What do you mean by change in y? New value of y minus original value of y. Original value of y is what? f of x. See, original value of y is f of x. f of x is y. f of x is y. Come here. f of x is y. Okay, y minus y. And what is f of x plus delta x? Here, f of x plus delta x. What is this f of x plus delta x? f of x plus delta x is nothing but y plus delta y. Okay, this come here. So, y plus delta y. y and y cancels, delta y remains. Yes, delta y. In other words, this and this are same. This is the expression to know what is dy by dx and this is the expression to find out dy by dx. Okay. So, what you need to remember is this one dy by dx is limit of delta y by delta x when delta x tends to 0 and this one dy by dx is equal to limit of f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x when delta x tends to 0. Okay. <coughs> Once again I repeat what is dy by dx? dy by dx is this is for the function y is equal to f of x dy by dx is limit of delta y by delta x when delta x tends to 0. How to find out dy by dx for the function y is equal to f of x? dy by dx is limit of f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x when delta x tends to 0. We will consider one example. Say y is equal to x square. I need to find out what is a dy by dx for this particular function. dy by dx is equal to limit of f of x plus delta x. This is f of x. Say limit of, uh, I will write 
f of x I will write first of all, what is f of x? x square, I have substituted here x square. What is x plus f of x plus delta x? Same expression, say what you need to write is x plus delta x the whole square f of x plus delta x is similar to f of x, only thing is in place of x you need to substitute x plus delta x. What is f of x? x square. What is f of x plus delta x? x plus delta x whole square divided by divided by delta x when delta x tends to 0. See for the function y is equal to f of x dy by dx is for this, this one, for this, this one. Another example, y is equal to root x if you take dy by dx is equal to as per this definition limit of limit delta x tends to 0, f of x plus delta x root of x plus delta x minus f of x root x divided by delta x. You can take still more examples for the function say y is equal to tan x. This is an example of y is equal to f of x. dy by dx is equal to limit of f of x plus delta x tan of x plus delta x minus f of x, f of x is tan x divided by delta x when delta x tends to 0. I hope you got the idea. For the function y is equal to f of x dy by dx is this. For the function y is equal to x square dy by dx is this. Let us simplify, you will get the answer, let us see how to, how to get it. It is a problem under limits now, you have worked out plenty of problems and limits, this may not be tough for you. Limit of, expand this, x square plus delta x the whole square plus 2 x delta x minus x square divided by delta x when delta x tends to 0. You find that x square x square cancels. Left hand side you have got still dy by dx, dy by dx is equal to you have delta x the whole square plus 2 x delta x divided by delta x. You find that you can divide by delta x, you get delta x plus 2 x. So, dy by dx is sorry, I have not written the limit. Say what is that? Limit of limit delta x tends to 0. So, you will get delta x plus 2 x. Substitute here delta x is 0. You must know what is a variable. In a limiting problem, what is a variable you can make out by looking at the limit. Here x is not the variable in this limiting problem. Here the variable is delta x in this limiting problem. So, substitute here 0 plus 2 x is equal to 2 x. So, dy by dx is equal to 2 x. What is y? The dy by dx is one term representing differential coefficient. What is y? y is nothing but you find that here y is nothing but x square. So, derivative of x square is 2x. That is what I said derivative is an expression. You can convert it into a numerical value dy by dx at x is equal to 1. <coughs> at x is equal to 1. See how do you read this? dy by dx at x is equal to 1. How do you read? dy by dx at x is equal to 1. If you substitute 2 into 1 is equal to 2. See, it is a numerical value. Basically, derivative is an expression, but you can convert it into a numerical value at different, different points. Okay. So, for the function, once again I repeat, for the function y is equal to x square, you have found out dy by dx is equal to how much you got? 2x. In other words, you can say that derivative of x square is equal to 2x. You need to remember this. Like that you can take different different standard functions and you uh, with the help of this particular formula, how to find out dy by dx. So, it will be a problem under limit. Simplify, you will get the expression. Like I have taken y is equal to x square, I have, with the help of this formula, I have got what is derivative of x square you got it as 2x. So, there are different standard functions and we have got derivative of that and you need to by heart those also. Once you have understood by hearting will not be very difficult for you and by hearting is a must. Like how while doing puja for Purohit mantra fluency is a must. 
Similarly, for you while working out problems, having the fluency of formula is very, very important. Not formula, formulae. Formula, singular, formulae, plural. You know the importance of trigonometric uh, formulae. Very, very important. Let it be transformation formulae, product formulae or compound angles. Like that, we have got different set of uh, formulae here. We will see what is that. <coughs> important formulae. Important formulae. Formulae in uh, differentiation. Differentiation. I repeat, differentiation is an operation. Differentiate on both sides. Why you are differentiating? To get measure of variation. Why you are differentiating? To get differential coefficient. To get derivative. Differentiation is an operation. By that operation, what are you getting? By Because of that operation, because of differentiation, you are getting derivative or you are getting differential coefficient. Okay. Say important formula. Say before that, what you need to remember is dy by dx is equal to limit of delta y by delta x when delta x tends to 0. This is for the function y is equal to f of x. This is for the function y is equal to f of x. And how to obtain dy by dx? dy by dx is equal to limit of f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x when delta x tends to 0. These are two important formulae, very, very important. Then other formulae, see, important formula like this is very important, 1 and this is 2. Okay. Next, this is Roman number 1. Roman number 2, first one, derivative of x is equal to 1. Second one, derivative of x square is equal to 2x. Derivative of x cube is equal to 3x square. Next, derivative of x to the power of n is equal to n into x to the power of n minus 1, where n is a constant, n is any rational number. Okay. Next, fifth one, derivative of a constant is equal to 0. I, I have given the example. A constant function means there is no variation. If there is no variation, measure of variation is 0. That is why derivation, derivative of a constant is 0. Sixth one, derivative of root x is equal to 1 by 2 root x. All these formulae can be proved with the help of this. Next, derivative of 1 by x is equal to minus 1 by x square. Next, we can have derivative of say log x to the base e is equal to 1 by x. Next, derivative of e to the power of a x is equal to a into e to the power of a x. Next, derivative of e to the power of x is equal to e to the power of x. Next, derivative of a to the power of x is equal to a to the power of x into log a to the base e. Next, we have derivative of k into f of x is equal to k is a coefficient. You can take out k and differentiate only f of x, derivative of f of x. Say for example, example, derivative of phi x square is equal to phi times derivative of x square. See, k is phi and f of x is x square. k I have taken out and differentiate only f of x. Like this, you have got plenty of examples. You need to remember all this formulae and which is already given to you. You need to remember and you have got to buy hat before proceeding with next class. Till then, wish you all the best.